All right, so let's get it started here. So Cynthia G, one of the most hated women on the internet, in the most loved, all right? How are you doing today? I'm actually doing really good. You know, I'm enjoying my time off of YouTube, actually. Really? Mm hmm I actually prefer um, the exclusivity of Patreon. Okay. I like that it's not trolling. I like that, you know, it's like a filter through people coming and stealing your content and making videos based on your content because in order to access the content, you have to pay. So yeah. it's behind a paywall. So it really filters out a lot. Basically, I can just do my content and then not have the stress of all the toxicity that comes with Black YouTube. And being out in the public, you know what you, you that's a very good point. For those of you guys that do not know, um, you know, Cynthia G., YouTube channel was was terminated. I feel like she was targeted. I don't know if Cynthia wants to get into that or not. I do. I do. I do feel like I was targeted. And I might as well, since the woman who um, wrote the article has already been identified. Yes. Um, I'm not going to necessarily say her name um, because I, I won't give that attention. But as you know, this is a woman who, um, before I even, I think like less than 24 hours after I got the strike on my, my channel, she emailed me and said that she was writing an article on it and asked me that I want to make a statement. Um, and she stated that she had already had a statement from YouTube, which we both know YouTube generally doesn't give statements when they put strikes on channels. Right, so right. Clearly, this is something that she facilitated. Um, she's in the article talking about how she targeted my channel. And because she wasn't able to find any recent content that would be deemed as hate speech, she had to go two years um, into the past in order to find it and said that she instructed other people to mass flag it and she flagged it herself but was disappointed because another video that she flagged was not removed wow and so um this is absolutely being targeted i've got a lot of screenshots and comments and stuff from other people basically admitting to um targeting the channel as well so right now i'm working with my partner program manager um, to get everything worked out and, and reinstate the channel. But even if my channel gets reinstated, I'm, I'm not going to spend that much time on YouTube. Like now I see how peaceful it is off of YouTube. Um, so I don't know if my presence on YouTube will be, you know, as heavy as it was before. I, I, I feel where you're coming from. And I, I want to say this because, you know, I'm, as you know, I'm currently in the YouTube partner program, of course. But I think it's it's very disheartening as a creator to know that I have a video from years ago that you approved. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you may still even be running ads on it. Right. And years later, I can be taken down off of something that you already approve like that just doesn't i can see if i upload something new and then it hits a guideline or whatever but it's like i can't retroactively go back and go through every single piece of content i've ever made you know what i'm saying like when you have to worry about that it, it affects how creative you can be on youtube well there isn't a content creator that I know of this on YouTube that's thinking about a live stream or a video they did two years ago. Like, yep. facts. we not sitting up thinking about that. We're constantly coming with new, you know, new content trending topics, whatever. Like, now we know all this dust with Kiki Palmer, her bitter baby daddy. And oh, we going to get into that. Yeah, like, we already, <laughs> we be on the next topic like we ain't thinking about something from two years ago and i think that it's just not fair really for youtube as a company to even allow someone to go two years into the past and say well hey i have a problem with this video now can you remove it and then the content creator gets a strike on the channel when just like you said they approved this for monetization. They, it, it went through a human review. They said mm -hmm. that it was advertiser friendly, which means that it's not violating the community guidelines. 
videos that violate the community guidelines are not advertisable. So if it's advertiser friendly, it doesn't violate the community guidelines. These are videos that shouldn't even be allowed to be reported at the end of the day. I agree. But this video was nonetheless. Now, I don't even know who this woman is, but I know that she had to have um, gotten on the radar of my channel fairly soon, sooner than um, later in the past. Because if so, why wouldn't you have pro why wouldn't you have um, reported this video back in 2021 after I did it? Like, why wouldn't you have just reported it back then? Obviously, somehow she's gotten wind of my channel. And I think it's I actually think it's kind of racist to have a white woman weaponizing her um, her title as a reporter, because that's what she's calling herself. Do I think she's really a reporter? No. But I do think it's racist for her to be weaponizing that ability, the media, to try and silence a black woman because of her opinion on black males in her community. I think that's extremely racist. I agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And especially when there are people on the platform that are um, saying things that are 100 times worse than you, especially when now I see a lot of people I don't want to say copying your, your talking points, but they're definitely keeping it alive. And I'm like, you got that from Cynthia G. I see it in the comment sections. Mm -hmm. I see it in the shade room, Instagram. I'm, I see even public figures starting to say it, talk about black male worship. And I'm like, I know where you got that from. There was no <laughs> yeah. one saying that. Like, well, um, we know for a fact there was no term called no. black male worship prior. There was no discussion ever had in the black community about black women worshiping black men. It did not exist. I don't know how far you go back until I set up on YouTube and said it. Black it's true. It's true. It, it didn't exist. And I know there are some other people who want to lay claim to it and be like, oh, well, I was talking about male worship in this. No, it was not a thing. Just like married single mothers was not a thing or a discussion being had in our community because you're not going to promote marriage as the solution to single motherhood if you think there's an issue of married single mothers. So that's also a concept that wasn't um, presented to the community until I, I was talking about it on YouTube. It just it just is what it is. It is. It is what it is. OK, well, I'm. I'm going I'm to leave that there and leave that alone. Um, but enjoy your Patreon. I ain't going to lie to you. I low-key understand now why a lot of creators move to Patreon. They move to locals or uh, shit. Or like Tasha K, you got your own app. and Yeah, I'm working do, on that too. Yeah, yeah. It's like you do your own thing. You can make whatever kind of content you want. And you know that the people are there. They want to be there. Yeah, it is. You, you definitely... I'm not going to say some of your haters are not going to pay to see your content because some of them will, but they're not going to be long term paying over time to stock mm -hmm. your channel. They're, they're, they're just not going to be doing that. So um, you can make the content that you want. You do see the people who are really serious about the message. You see who support you. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just a better feel. The stress level is less. You're not having to have um fake beefs with people who got beef with you and you don't know they have beef with you you don't have people trying to expose you or you know dox you and things of that sort that's not happening on patreon not to my knowledge um and it wouldn't happen on my own website either which i am creating that because there's a lot of things that i want to do there's a lot that i want to talk about that youtube is just not going to allow um you to talk about and and one of those is dv because it's like, as we're in the wake of not just this situation with Kiki Palmer, but we have also the turkey leg hut situation with yeah. this woman who's saying that she was in a DV relationship and behind closed doors, she's pretending that this is a happy marriage. A lot of black women, I feel like, don't know how to recognize a DV relationship. They don't know the first signs of it because it doesn't start with, you know, a man just pounding on you. That's not how DV starts. There's a cycle to it and there's different phases leading up to it. And I think that they don't understand how to recognize it. So I want to do content on, you know, how you can recognize the signs of abuse. What is the cycle? Because the black community to me functions out of the DV relationship. Oh, yeah. We glorify it. We um, mm -hmm. we literally glorify it as um We'll get to that in a minute. We glorify it as if it's as if it's sexy, you know, like 
Mm-hmm. You don't love me unless you threaten to kill me. You, yeah, yeah, you choke me up a little bit or whatever. Or I've worked with people and I've heard a lady say, yeah, I ran him over with my car and then it was what it was. Like, like it's it's this face Christian, this Ari money bag. Ugh. Yeah. I, future and anybody he's dealing with yeah. like because i i think that because future hasn't been accused of any physical violence i think people don't see him as abusive but he is abusive he Definitely. absolutely is nick Definitely. cannon is nick yep. cannon has came out who's in giving tons of indicators that he's abusive um one way that he chooses to abuse is financially um jeezy is too and 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 speaking of that, speaking of that, I really wanted to know what was your thought about the Neil Long and Jeezy conversation that first off nobody asked for. Okay, no one asked for it. Well, first let me say this: Neil Long looks beautiful. She looks good. Um, her boyfriend, baby daddy, whatever he is, he truly dropped the ball. He left her to go be with mediocre cottage cheese, but nonetheless, um. In this interview, you know, I'm halfway through it, but I can see that they cut out a lot. Um, There are certain points where Nia would start to make a point and then you would see it cut. You know me, you recognize that because we make content. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just like, if you're going to do it, be fully authentic. I think that Nia was also chosen to, to conduct this interview because she's not an experienced journalist. So she's not going to dig on certain talking points. Um, are you going to play some of it? Because yeah. there's like, I have so many thoughts on this interview. Uh, right off the top, the fact that he's even interviewing with Nia Long is saying something because this is a black man who has a history of showing disdain for, for black women. He has a history of showing the multiple ways, through multiple ways, how he devalues black women. Um, So I don't think it was um, accidental. I think it was very purposeful for Jeezy to have after he ended the relationship with this Asian woman that he defended, that he put on a pedestal, Mm -hmm. this woman who went on literally a media tour about submission, um, how much he elevated her, talking about how solid she was, talking about how good of a woman she was. Then after two years of marriage, he's divorcing her. Then he gets in an interview with a black woman, mind you, one who is kind of in a in an interesting situation because her scandal was involving a black man who decided to cheat on her and compromise the relationship for a white woman. This is Jeezy who left three women who are not white. Um, I thought they were all black, but apparently the the other one that he was engaged to, she looks to be at least biracial, whatever. We know two out of the three women were black women that he left baby mamas. He was engaged to one of them, broke off the engagement to get with Jeannie Mai, uplifted her, praised her, impregnated her, then divorced her. So he starts the discussion out talking about the um, abuse that he suffered as a child by a woman. I think that was very strategic and purposeful that he did because he's essentially setting the tone for sympathy um have you ever heard of uh, gd talking about um being essayed out the child have you ever heard him never until this interview never exactly and typically males especially black males are not very vocal about the essay that they experience be it by male or female they are not vocal they don't just sit up in interviews and talk about this he introduced his childhood assault to a black woman on an interview after he impregnated yet another woman then abandoned her and literally went into this diatribe about being afraid of intimacy so i think yep yeah he was setting the stage to say look have sympathy for me based on the way i treat women because at the end of the day women are the reason why i'm like this he went into this to blame women do i think that he was touched as a child I don't believe it. And if he and even if he did, even if he was the way in which he's using it on this interview is very insidious. I want to ask you this. On one hand, okay, I get it. He got essay by uh, my older girl, babysitter, whatever. 
Um, but what part does toxic black male culture play into a lot of his abuse growing up too? Because I mean, him having to hide under the sink as a woman was being abused, like that was a man abusing a woman, all of the yeah. violence in the neighborhood that he grew up in that was perpetrated mostly by men. I'm assuming. I don't really know too. I don't really know a whole lot of women running through neighborhoods, shooting it up and, and, and raping and this, that, and the third. So, um, a lot of his issues, it's not coming from women is also coming from toxic black male culture. Yes. But when he came on there, he painted the narrative of blaming women because you notice that he didn't mention where his father was when he was being essayed. He didn't mention where his father was when he was having a toxic relationship with his mother. He didn't mention his father at any point in time. Like even when he mentioned him dropping the ball on raising his own son, he didn't even talk about how, look, my father was not around. Therefore, I had no blueprint from which to work from on how to raise my son into manhood. Even though he sat up there and admitted that what he instilled in his son was problematic, he didn't talk anything about his own father because where did you learn that it was okay to keep impregnating women and then abandoning them? You learned it from your father doing it to your mother, but you didn't even you didn't even bother to speak on your father. Every issue that he presented was an issue that came from a woman, basically. Came from a woman. But you see how they cut it? There was a lot more that was said there. Yeah, it was. You know what I, I also think, though? I think that Black men understand the pathology of Black women much more than they think that they do. And I think that Black men are, for the most part, when they get into these interviews, they're very careful as to who they're going to be interviewed by. Nia mm -hmm. Long, even though she's beautiful, even though she's revered in the community, she has the same pathology as most Black women do. And that is a, a pathology to where she doesn't see value in herself unless she's tied to a man. Nobody's going to convince me otherwise. I love Nia Long, though. Trust and believe. Nia Long is one of the goats in the community, okay? Fact. She was right, a prop, right up there on a pedestal with Jada Pinkett Smith. Now, Black men can act like they got a problem with Jada, but we know how much Jada was that girl. Back yeah, in the oh, yeah. Okay? Can't but, deny it. Can't deny it, yes. Yeah, Nia Long was that girl, too. That's a fact. Right. They That's got songs fact. about me along. They got songs about me along. So and they literally don't know. even make them like her no more. They literally don't. No. And she is like a timeless beauty. She doesn't seem to age. Yet she sat in a re now. I don't know how Nia Long feels about marriage and commitment. Uh, I don't. I don't know if she sees marriage as the ultimate commitment. Most black women do. I'm not one of those women. I would get married, but I don't see marriage as something that I need to do, nor do I think marriage is synonymous with commitment. I, I don't think that those two are the same. Um, Nia Long set in this extended relationship with this man with no type of marriage at all. Um, and, and then word on the street is this ain't the first time he cheated. Oh, wow. Okay. And well. here's the thing. When it comes to cheating, the... I would think separating yourself from the relationship depends on the invest and the, the type of investment that you have in the relationship. I'm not going to sit here and say that everybody who's gotten cheated on the first time a man cheats, you should walk away. You should if you want to, but I understand why a lot of women don't. I understand why a lot of people don't, because there are scenarios where a man will get cheated on and he'll take the woman back too. We, we yeah. know that. There's they scenarios where about it, but they absolutely do. Yeah, they absolutely do. They will deal with a woman cheating on them. They'll give the, the public persona and a lot of them, um, some of them won't. There are a lot of them who won't, but a lot of them will. A lot of them will tolerate women cheating. But so I don't necessarily think that a woman is not valuing herself because a man steps out one time. I'm, I'm the type of person of it's not what you do, it's how you go about doing it. And how do you deal with it after you do it? Because yeah. that's going to show more of your character than you engaging in the behavior in and of itself. We know people make mistakes. Like, I've never cheated, but I mean, could I? I don't know. Maybe, possibly. People make mistakes. Um, relationships don't just break down because of cheating. There's other reasons to. But people make mistakes. But I think it says something about a woman like Nia Long, who has so many different options, who has been put on a pedestal and then be in this relationship with this man and it doesn't progress in, unless she just doesn't want marriage. If she doesn't want marriage, that's fine. 
Right, right, right. But a lot of people do. And if you want marriage, why are you staying in a relationship with a man for eight, 10 and 13 years and it's not progressing to a marriage? You know what? That's a good point. Now, I remember because she has the older son that's grown and then she has the younger son that's like a teenager now. I remember when she, when he was born. I remember that. And she was on, I want to say Ebony Magazine, and they asked her, like, this is your long-time boyfriend. I think they had been together a few years at that time. And they're like, you guys are going to get married? Like, what's the goal? And she's like, I'm not really tripping off of it. But is it that you're not tripping off of it, or do you know that he's not going to marry you, so you're just accepting it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know her to know the difference. I don't know. A lot of women want it, but they know he doesn't want to and they accept it. And I'm not saying that's the case for Nia Long, but I know for a fact that is the case with a lot of black women. And I think that they think that they can ultimately change that man's mind. I think they think that if they show him this loyalty by staying into the rela staying in the relationship without progressing to marriage, that it will somehow progress to marriage. And I think that's a flaw in women. I really think that's a flaw in women. I think it's a huge flaw. Um, I think women do not understand how men operate. Black women mostly do not understand it. Um, I think black women, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to offend. Like I really don't. <laughs> but it's almost like black women are mentally retarded when it comes to men. It's almost like they're mentally retarded. Being a fool for love, men a yeah. fool for love. Yeah, it is. And not, not, not just being a fool for love, but seeing things, obviously, you obviously we see like how many generation have these men been creating kids and abandoning them? Why are you still having them? Why? Like, at what point does it click in your mind to say these men in large amounts are abandoning their children and they're getting on public platforms talking about how they don't value their children they don't want to provide for them we now see that outside of the compute community with white women and some asian women why are you still putting these males on a pedestal why why are they still your preference why are you still willing to have children when you know nine times out of ten they're going to abandon it they're not going to take care of it i, I mean listen we have we've we've seen a lot of creators on youtube say you know f you and them kids or if y'all cause me too much stress, like forget it. Just holler at me when you 18, holler at me when you 16. And it's like, it's wow, so easy just to say F your kids. Like, that's wow, that's crazy. Um, we had this discussion on the show the other day, and I was just simply telling women, like, why don't you open up your options? What is stopping you from doing it? Because I said I watch a lot of Kendra G. Shout out to Kendra G. Now, no shade to Kendra G. I don't take her show seriously yeah, i take yeah, it as like yeah. entertainment purposes only <laughs> like no shade um but she making her money so do you but time after time after time black woman getting up first off it's always mostly black women getting up there my man gotta be black he gotta yeah. be dark he gotta be chocolate he gotta i want black muscular strong nappy head like women look i know it's derogatory but women love Black women love the blackest of the black. Yeah, and black then, women are obsessed with recreating their own skin tone. They are. But then that very same, th their reflection gets on camera. My name Demarcus and uh, light skins only, whites yep. only, Asians only. Yeah. I'm like, what? Uh, we we uh, talk about Richard T. Jones from uh, Why Did I Get Married? His new girl, well, his new wife, which is not his wife, but his new lady. Some throwaway Asian. It's like, and they all have the same look: very dark, bald, older, boomer, Gen X, whatever. It. I don't know. Maybe you can speak to that more than me. Listen, it is a psychological fact that any time you are chasing after something that's disrespecting you, devaluing you, um, and shunning you, that has to do with self-esteem. There's no way around it. So, black women chasing after a, a male group who has already made it known publicly multiple times that they don't want you. Like you can watch any dating show. These males are going to go on there and talk about how they want white women. It was on Married at First Sight. It was on that that show on Netflix. Um, uh, Love, Love is Blind. Blind. Yep. Love is Blind. 
any type of show where these bandits have a choice in the race of the woman that they want, they're going to make it blatantly clear that black women are not that choice. Black women are acting like they don't see this. And everybody knows they see it because whenever they see it, they get in the comment section, just like the comment on this post. And they're talking about how this is what black men always choose. So, you know, as a black woman, you know who they are. You know they're disloyal, but you're still chasing after them. It's a self-esteem issue. It, there's, there's just no way around it. There, there's black women have very, very low self-esteem, very low self-esteem, and black men know it, and black men take advantage of it. And the and the wild thing to me is like even when I look at his posts, um, he gives me Brian McKnight energy, like, yeah, like, like. Does. Like he said, Christy Jones blesses my heart daily, y'all. Love me some her. What? <laughs> Somebody in the comments said, what happened to his wife, Nancy? <laughs> like, sir, like this is, this is weird. Wait, let me pull up this picture here. You might find me in that comment section. <laughs> <laughs> I was in there playing in dust. Because... Listen, he said, I love my beautiful wife. And they're not legally married. That's the weird thing. Um, thanks for loving me, Chris. You're my heart. Listen, there's no way. She said he said, You're my heart. What? Yeah. Sir. And then when I look at their body language, he is way more into her than she is into him. She's barely yeah. leaning into him. He's holding. He, Ma'am, blink twice if you're being held against your will. Well, you know that's usually how it is. These males like him think that they have a prize when they can get close to someone who is not black. Um, it's funny because when you mentioned how black women, though, introduce and be in the comment section, and I've seen it too, declaring their loyalty to black men. Oh, all I want me is a black man. I noticed that. Why did I just lose my train of thought? I had a really good point too. I'm gonna have to wait for it to come back. I had a train of, <laughs> I missed my train of thought. I lost it. That's I okay. I'm gonna look up at Facebook while you do this. I want to show you this too. What's up, people? My name is Storm Monroe, and I am a celebrity entertainment reporter. You may have seen me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and various other social media platforms. But today, I'm not here to talk about cele celebrities in Hollywood or even to gossip with you. I'm actually getting on this camera today to give you a testimonial about Wicks of Wisdom candles. I actually personally started using Wicks of Wisdom candles in March of 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. I was super uh, pessimistic about the validity of the candles, but once I started using them, I, I, I had no choice but to admit that the candles were super powerful and did everything that Dr. Linda and I discussed. Throughout the candles um, that I've burned over the last, I want to say three and a half years now, I've been able to bring abundance in my life, get rid of blocks and obstacles, um, get rid of dark energy that was thrown at me, as well as protect myself from various dark energies as well. And so depending on what's going on in your life or what you may need the candles for, I would personally recommend them. They are literally a prescription for your soul and um, I stand by them wholeheartedly. So once you actually order Wicks of Wisdom candles, you're probably wondering what's all gonna come in your box, right? What should you expect? So first, you should actually expect the candles that come in a set of three and the directions on how to properly use the candles, how to light them, how to remain safe while they are being lit will all come um, in, in your box. So make sure you actually read the instructions. In addition to that, you're gonna get your oils, okay? The number of oils and um, the kind of oils that you get in your box is going to be different depending upon whatever situation you have. That could be love, that could be money and success, uh, removing obstacles, good luck, etc. In addition to that, you're gonna get your herbs, your powder, and then you should expect your partitions as well, okay? What to actually put on the partitions, um, how to use them, how to burn them, all of those instructions will be given to you um, when you make your order. Uh, let me 
me see. Yeah, if it come back to me, I'll say it, but I just it flew. And it was a it was a very good point too. I hope it comes back. That's his first wife right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I, I get it. Yeah. Black women are sitting up there essentially chasing after black men so that they can have access to the genetic stock that's going to help them replicate the skin tone that they want. Black mm. men are running from that. And they don't, black women don't understand the very thing that you value in them, because that's literally the only thing that they provide. I've talked to many black women and said, why do you need them? And the one thing they'll say is because they want black children. So you're chasing after these males for the very blackness that they're rejecting you for. Because when you are as a black man and you're gravitating towards a woman whose genetic material has the ability to lighten up your blackness and completely erase it, you're not going to tell me that black men are not running from the very thing that black women values, that they have the ability to help them replicate, which is their black skin. They mm. black men are trying to run from it, black women are running to it. They're not it, it, it has to be now. I mean, maybe maybe it's just something I don't understand because I'm not real dark skinned, so I don't have that experience. You yeah, know. Um I would be interested in interviewing some black men, especially of that generation, and just really like ask them, like, do you think you have value outside of your BBC? Like, do you think you have any value outside of that? I don't think they, I think that they know that they don't. That's why they don't talk about anything other than their BBC. Like, even when they talk about the appeal that they have to other women, they're it's like, oh, she wants a black dick. Oh, it's the BBC. They know they don't have anything to offer anyone. Um, but because women will still accept them sexually, they will not change one thing. They're not, they're not going to. And what black women don't understand is all of your loyalty to these males, despite being treasonous, despite being disloyal, is making them seem more valuable than they are to other women. It is the fact that black women are rooting themselves to black men that's making other women attracted to black men. And that's black women don't seem to understand that. But it's like you are you're making them look desirable to other groups of women because you refuse to open up your options. You refuse to get them off the pedestal. And then if you think about it. These males are abusive. They have nasty attitudes. They have no resources. They're very treasonous and disloyal and always have been. Yet these are the very males that black women say they only want to date. They must be good. They're, they must be great. They must be. There has to be something that's phenomenal about them if they can engage in all of this negative behavior and black women are still chasing after. chasing after nothing <laughs> like literally they nothing, are chasing after nothing nothing but penis unless penis is just that powerful like <laughs> and, <heartache. laughs> like, and, and, and you had me cracking up i was watching one of your shows and you said yeah well, you know I, i'm not saying that i still won't be intimate with it but come in do what you gotta do and get out because you're not staying <laughs> Yeah, no, they not. They're like, you go come in here, you go run some dick, and you go get treated <laughs> like you only have dick to offer. I'm not about to fall in love with, with dick. I'm, I'm not. And that's the problem that I think Black women are having. And I, I really think Black men's ego wouldn't be as high if Black women would discard them and treat them as if they only have dick to offer. Instead, Black women treat Black men like they have the world to offer. They, they That's how they're treated. They're treated gotcha. like they have a ton to offer. They're treated like they're nice. They're treated like they're a commodity, like they're a prize, even though they're not. And it's like, you can even look in the DSM-5 and you can look at um, how you create narcissist and antisocial personality and black women is doing everything. And black women is doing everything that you do to create narcissist. Mm. Praising them just because like literally black women praise black men just because they exist. And you simply need to have a conversation with them to know that the only reason why they like them is because they're black and male. That's the only reason. Wow. Damn. Damn. Pin drop, pin drop. That's why, that's why they mad at you, Cynthia G. 
Yeah, but it's like my thing is I'm not if all you have to offer me is dick, you're going to get treated accordingly. You are. You you will get treated accordingly. Yeah, run it and keep it moving. And, and this is what I love about you too. You like, and I'm not having your baby. <laughs> like I'm not mm-hmm. like don't think you're gonna anchor because I think they call them anchor babies, right? When they try to yeah. like trap the woman. Like what happened to Kiki? I guess we can. Um, did you want to make any more points on the Jeezy video? Um, I do. I want to go to that part about where he's talking about um, needing them needing black women at their lowest. Oh, OK. Um, let me see what he talked about his mom. Was it at the beginning? No, it's further into it. Okay. I, I think it's past this part. I, I do think it's past this part. Um, where was it at? Because there was a, it was, it's at the part, I think, where they're talking about how black men and black women need to have more of these discussions. Um, this is a man putting on a show, like he just got rejected and his relationship flopped from this woman that's not black that was put on a pedestal. I really wish black women would see past this level of manipulation. This is manipulation that he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows knows exactly what he's doing. Because black women are are in the comment, have all have been in the comment section since this relationship lasted, acting like Jeezy is the victim. Jeezy is not the victim. This is yet another woman that he's impregnated and created a child with and then abandoned. Like, how are you needing to go to counseling with somebody that you've been married to for two years, less than two years? Because he said therapy couldn't even help them. Why couldn't therapy help them? Are we going to put it on Jeannie Mai? Not to defend Jeannie Mai because she should have kept her dark meat on the side. But at the end of the day, I don't think the relationship demise was because of Jeannie Mai. And nobody's going to convince me that Jeannie Mai is the reason for the demise of that marriage. And this is a man who literally created children with three women in a band. Well, here's my issue, too. Jeannie Mai, uh, she's been very upfront with who she is and really what she's about. We know she's a social climber anyway. So when he got with her, what else did he expect? Did he expect respect? Did he think that she really cared about him did nobody tell this nigga that a asian woman's mo is to play the submissive role and then once you marry them they flip white men know this especially to a black man when all you hear them sitting up on the computer talking about is submission from the celebrity black males to the low tier ones all of them is i I want a submissive woman submissive 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 which is the mantra of a dominated and conquered group of men we know that the males in society who have the least power and authority are in the most are the most subjugated they need somewhere to compensate for that so because they have no social power because they are being dominated, they need to compensate by beating down, brawl beating women, getting women to essentially be in a position of servitude to them. That's why they're obsessed with submission. That's why you don't see any other group of men having these panels on, oh, she won't submit to me and I need somebody who's submissive. You don't hear other groups of men putting out loud PSAs. And that's because they have a power in the uh, society. They do. They have. The lowest white man have power over the highest black man. And we saw that when Obama was being checked by white police officers. Why are you, as a white police officer, trying to check the president of the United States? It's true. <laughs> like, it's, and, and from a black woman's perspective, which I can't speak for black women, but I could kind of understand how it would be hard to submit to the submissive. I'm not going to. I saw a video this one black woman made. She said, I'm not. She said, I'm not bowing down to the slave and I hollered. And I'm like, look, that might not be cool to say, but still hollered. Like, That's you know, what they want you to do. That's you go, you, what they want. As a man, you have to go prove yourself out in the world and your women will naturally follow. But if you have to keep saying submission, submission, you're probably not worth being submitted to. And, and then if we're talking about the whole Christian aspect, first off, as a man, you have to submit yourself to the Lord. Most of you niggas ain't living for the Lord, so you have to be the provider. Yeah, you're not like you're not owed submission just because you have a penis. 
But you know what? If women wouldn't have bought into that notion that um, God placed the males who need women to burst them into existence, if women wouldn't have bought into that notion that you are God has placed your creation above you as the creator, men would not have this mentality. It's because women have bought into these notions. They've bought into the biblical notion that, first of all, a male was birthed first. Mel, we know science tells you the first human on this planet was a female. Now, I don't know what planet bandits are living on or what planet Christians are living on, but science says the first person was a female. Not only that, the male genetics are not sufficient enough to be able to create a, the more dominant female genetics. We know that women's genetics are dominant to men. It just it, it just is what it is. Yep. So a, a male cannot create a female any more than a white person can create a black person. Like saying that males create females is like saying literally, biologically, the equivalent of saying that a white person can naturally produce a black person. And we know that that's not true. And I'm not talking about you laying down with a white person and creating a biracial child and calling it black. I'm saying a white person, two white people coming together and naturally their biology creating a black person. We know that that's happen. not possible. Yeah, it, it's it not going to happen. It's not possible. If you look at science, a male can never create a, a female. It's not possible. With their genetics, it is not possible. Yet black, not just not just black women, but women globally have bought into the notion that they are the seed of a male. No, you're not. You're not the seed of a male. The male is the seed of you. Even if they were to come, you can just look up online a comparison between the X and a Y chromosome. And you can already see how much more dominant women's recessive cannot create dominant. They can't. So males cannot create females, but it gives up the males an extreme, extreme ego boost to think that they can create females. No, you cannot. Like you, you can't. And then to think that they're creating babies in general. No, her body is creating the baby. Your sperm isn't creating anything. You're simply bringing the male's genetics to her body in hopes that her body can create a baby out of it. And we know that every time a male delivers his sperm to a woman's egg, her body does not make a baby out of it. We know, no, that. No, we know no, that it does not. Her no. body chooses when it will make a child out of his with his dna and uh, and before we look at this here what had always got me I, I i don't know maybe i don't know maybe i'm dumb i just always thought that babies were 50 50 so i didn't understand this notion of like the baby is my sperm cell it's not the actual combination of the egg and the sperm cell yeah, the, that's like, really what they're saying like i've heard men say like your womb, your womb is dead um you ain't doing nothing but incubating and by the way that is super disrespectful to women if y'all having babies for somebody that say you ain't done nothing but incubated is yeah. wild. that's wild to me yeah but that's where selective mating comes in right and one one thing that black women don't understand is that the mindset drives the behavior so if a man believes that you're just incubating a child and you have no importance beyond that, then he does not value you as a woman. And that's going to reflect in his behavior. Like, But look up here at the X and the Y. Like, I mean, really? Look at this tiny little piece. You think that they think this tiny little piece of a Y chromosome can create an X chromosome? This much bigger much more robust, much more resilient, like really? So now I won't even use those terms. <laughs> I'm not going to use the terms I was going to. Okay. Again, I, 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 I will, re I recessive say, cannot create dominance. That's all I'm going to say. Point point blank. And I, I know, I think I know what you just want to say. I also know, well, I also learned in biology um, that when things go wrong in the womb, like when the baby's developing, the baby will default to XX. So, mm -hmm. like no matter what, we all we all started off as female. Yeah. So you also get your mitochondrial DNA from your mother mm -hmm. and her mother and her mother. And your mother passed down more of her genetics to you. 
Yeah, and, shit, and we damn near killed her to, to, for us to get here. So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying. So, like, if you look up what mitochondrial DNA is, baby, it's the powerhouse of your cells, the batteries in each part of your cells. So, like, you would not have a life without your mother's DNA. Yeah, but women, and I don't, I think women don't really understand or take accountability for um, what they've allowed and how we've contributed to this mindset. Yeah. Um, because, you know, when you become male identified, when you blame a woman because a man is cheating, you're facilitating this problem. This situation here where Nia Long and I haven't even watched the whole interview, but I know for a fact that she did not do this or else Jeezy wouldn't have been in the interview with him, with him. She didn't. The fact that she didn't sit up and say, look, I understand your background. I understand you feel like you have a fear of intimacy, but that's no excuse for you creating children with multiple women and then abandoning them. And you just did it again to G to Jeannie Mai. You didn't even put up a fight for this relationship. Like, what do you mean? Because how are he's going to call himself a visionary, which implies that he has discernment and foresight, but you didn't have the discernment and foresight to know that this woman, Jeannie Mai, was not about to submit to you. You didn't have the discernment or foresight, not one, not two, not three, but four times to be able to tell that these weren't women that you wanted to be in long-term relationships with, and therefore you shouldn't have created children with. Like, that's that accountability is not there when a man has a pattern of being with women, creating children and then abandoning them. That's a problem. That means it's him. He is the problem. The, the marriage broke down. I don't believe because the genie my I believe it was because of genie. He does not want to be in a commitment. He does not want to be a family man. And he's demonstrated how he doesn't want to be a family man. Did Nia Long hold him accountable for that? No. Well, why fake it then? Why not just be seen? That's, that's what I don't understand. Like, if you really don't want to be a family man, you already have children. Why not just be single? Or was Jeannie Ma just used to clean up his image? Yeah, well, I think it's, I, well, I think number one, listen, <laughs> Jeannie Ma is too image conscious to let a black man put her in a position and with a baby and she ain't getting marriage out of it. Like, Jeannie Mai wasn't going to allow Jeezy to sit up here publicly and run the streets while she's sitting there and he had the open door. Like, basically, to the public, Jeannie Mai ain't going to let Jeezy treat her like a black woman. She mm. She's not going to do that. She ain't going to do that. You ain't... the G, You think Jeannie Mai is going to sit up there and Jeezy say, hey, I don't want to be in a committed relationship. Can we just have sex? Jeannie Mai ain't going to go for that. She's not going to go for that. That would completely decimate her image. Like, this is already a huge L for her image. Like, let's get that clear. You went from being in a marriage to a white man for 13 years. 13 years, which means you are more compatible with him than you were with Jeezy. Clearly. She's more compatible with that white man. Yet, you got out of a relationship with him after saying you didn't want kids and he did, only to become a baby mama to a man who had three other baby mamas, a history of abuse with his son, and a pattern where he shows that he's not commitment oriented, nor does he want to be a family man, and you become a baby mama to him at the age of 45, he initiates a divorce against you. 45? Yeah, she's 45. You lying. She's 45? Mm-hmm. I mean, that ain't old, but what what wow. Damn, she waited all her life to still be a fool. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, to a biracial child. So this is a huge Oh my God. Yeah. Or she 44. Yeah. So she'll be, she's basically 45, her birthday then January. So round up, she's 45. You're right. Uh, yeah. Damn. 1979. Okay. Yeah. She's January 4th. So she's basically 45. In two months, she'll be 45. But um, yeah, that's that's not a good look for her. That's not a good look for her. How do you oh, become be a statistic of a black man? I'd be pissed. I waited all my life to still be a failure. I'd be pissed. Yep. I would have That's to throw hands. I'd have to throw hands with that nigga. I'm sorry. I have to throw hands because you got me fucked up. And me. then how does it make Jeannie Mai look that he's sitting up there saying even therapy cannot fix a two-year 
marriage. This is the person that you shouldn't have married then. And you call yourself a visionary. You sitting up in there talking about how you go against the grain, but you're doing the same thing that other. How are you going against the grain? You got four baby mamas. The issue is that a lot of black men, I wanted to say from his generation because he's Gen X, but now the millennials and the Gen Z really following suit. A lot of them feel that if I just got money, that's all I have to bring to the table. And it's like there are so many other things about you as a man that you need to develop to be a good partner to someone. Even I know this and I ain't got no damn body. Like they just think, oh, I got money. It's way yeah. more than that. Give me one second. I turned off my camera because I'm trying to put this cord in here. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, and I, I don't necessarily think. Oh, wait a minute. Mute it. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I got to unmute her. Oh, I didn't I didn't realize that I muted myself. I didn't realize. No, you're, good. Myself. you're good. Oh, what? What's going on? OK. Oh, OK. There we go. Sorry, I didn't I didn't realize that um, I didn't realize I muted myself. I was trying to put my Ethernet cord in. OK, OK. So, yeah, I was trying to put it in there so that there will be no lagging coming from my end. But um, I think the reason why a lot of black men think the way they do about having multiple children with multiple women is because it's really not ostracized in the community. It's not. It's not. Even with this discussion now with this divorce, people are, are blaming Jeannie Mai as if this is not Jeannie's pattern. <laughs> like, this is his pattern. This is what he does. Literally. How is he escaping a discussion about, look, dude, this is the fourth woman and she ain't black. So now you're telling that now none of the black women, what's the problem? Clearly, the black women weren't the issue because you have this Asian woman here that everybody saw you praising publicly yep you are praising her publicly yet you divorced her and you saying therapy went, didn't even work but you're a visionary though but you have foresight though but you you didn't have the foresight to see that your relationships with these four women wasn't gonna work out and that you probably shouldn't be creating children with them because you know you're not a family man a lot of black men i think don't know themselves they want to put on a they have a chameleon issue like black men have a chameleon personality um this is one of the reasons why you can't bet and for people who don't know what a chameleon is <laughs> a chameleon personality is a part of antisocial behavior it, it's a part of the antisocial personality disorder um i do believe i read it under that if not then feel free, free to correct me but i'm pretty sure the chameleon personality it is a part of antisocial behavior, antisocial personality disorder, and it stems from a lack of a um, solid self-image. So essentially what it is, is a person who can read people's energy, they can read their body language, they can get a sense of who they are looking for, what characters are important to them, and then they mimic that. So they basically just take the form of whatever person they think, that a borderline personality disorder, sorry. That's a chameleon. Black men have that problem. We subconsciously build mechanisms inside our minds for other people to like us. Uh, the chameleon trait is often part of the borderline personality disorder due to low self-esteem and fear of abandonment. Yep. It, it also has a lot to do with a weak self-image, too. But um, a lot of what Jeezy is describing in here is a fear of abandonment. Because if you fear intimacy, it's because you fear abandonment. You don't want to become intimately attached to somebody because you feel they will abandon you. So, um, bam, you hit it right here. No, no sense of stable identity. Yep. Yep. A lot of black men are chameleons. That's how they survive. That's how they get around. That's how they draw different types of women in. If you see a man who's able to fool different types of women, like you remember that dude who went, who had the seven different baby mamas. And he said, oh, um, all of my baby mamas are different types of women. Some of them are yeah. corporate women. He has a chameleon personality. He's likely molding his character, his personality into what he believes these different women want. This is why you can't vet them. You can't vet a chameleon. How are you going to vet a chameleon who's yeah. lying? 
and being fake and simply creating a persona, putting on, we're putting on a mask that they think you want them, whatever, whatever, basically whatever personality they need to build up to get you to invest in them, they will do it. And a lot of black men have this chameleon personality. I think Jeezy has it actually. I'm going to dig more into this because I know a lot of people like this. Yeah. Uh, a lot of black men have it. Which I would venture to say a lot of them have borderline personality disorder. I think a lot of black men have comorbid um, mental illnesses. I really think that they do. And naturally so. The environment is conducive to it. Especially narcissism. The two ways to create a narcissist is through trauma and coddling. And hmm. we already know black women coddle the hell out of black men. They Black women refuse to not coddle these males. They refuse to not do it. She's coddling Jeezy right now in this interview. Yes, she is. She came off very, like, motherly almost. Like, mm -hmm. oh, he just needs a good woman in his... Oh, God, yeah. Y'all yeah. got to stop saying that, too. A good woman is not going to fix a man. I'm sorry. Like, I don't know... I don't know why y'all say that shit, but it's... Listen, black men destroy and, and traumatize good women all day, every day. Yes. And a chameleon is going to do that the most. Like, a, you're a woman. Can you imagine a woman dealing with a man who had a chameleon personality and how devastated she would be? Like how you would feel catfish, how you would feel tricked by a man who has a chameleon personality because you're thinking like, what the hell? What did I miss? Meanwhile, you didn't miss anything. He put up a persona. He wore he a mask to draw you in. And yeah, you can try to bet the mask. You can try to bet the mask, but the, but the mask is not real. So you vetted a persona and a mask that's going to eventually fall off. And most of the time, once by the time the mask falls off, you're already tied to them, either through a child or a marriage or some other form of um, ties. You'll be tied to him by the time that mask come off. So true. You be as I say, you be fucked. Um, let's play a little bit of this. I think I that part that transition was weird. Yeah, it just immediately went to something else. <laughs> like, where's the rest of it? So my like, problem with Jeezy is it's like this is disingenuous because when you guys are really getting to some real issues, you you, you cut it out. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll keep playing. I, yeah, he did so bad. Maybe that's not it. Okay, never mind. I definitely thought. Uh, we. <laughs> Um, it's, it's bullshit, but yeah, listen, a lot of black women were in the comment section saying, well, see, he just wants to come back home and now he wants a black woman. Why is it OK for a black man to elevate a non-black woman, put her on a pedestal, talk about how solid she is after you turn multiple black women into baby mamas and then black women embrace said black men and say oh he just needs to come on home why does he have the option why does he have the option and i and, and i don't think that black women understand how that facilitates this problematic behavior how are you in one breath talking about how much of an issue it is for black men to always want to go be with a non-black woman but then you embrace them with open arms after they do like this shouldn't be the discussion that it is with me along. This should be a discussion of Jeezy. What is going on with you to where your outcome, your relationship outcomes seem to be the same regardless of the race of the woman? Mm. Why? But he wouldn't sit, Jeezy wouldn't sit in front of anybody who's going to say that. He's like most black men, especially the famous ones, they're not going to sit in an interview in front of somebody that's going to bring any type of accountability. And if that person does, they will get attacked like Gail King. Yes. Yeah. Because she will. She would ask those questions. I think Gail King probably would ask those questions. I think Oprah would. Why do you keep creating these broken homes? If you feel like you have a problem with intimacy, you had a problematic childhood, why are you not sitting in counseling, doing the healing work so that you can have a relationship that deviates from your pattern of creating children with these women and then abandoning them? I, I, I Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. And I found that most black men are not trying to do the actual work, the real no, they work. Don't, they don't. 
they might yeah. even go to therapy, right? But they'll go to to vent, to blame. Okay, cool. I went through this. I went through that. But then when it's like, okay, we've put it all on the table. Um, now here's the work that you have to do on yourself. They stop going. <laughs> that's when they cut. That's when they cut it off. Like what? I can't just blame my mom forever. Like I'm sorry. X Y Z happened to you. I'm sorry. Your dad abandoned you. I'm sorry. Now this is how you fix yourself, and they they run from that work they're not even receptive to it and it's very dangerous for a group of males to think that they don't have to do any work on themselves like you will have black men who will bounce from relationship to relationship having the same outcome the one thing he's not going to do is look within he'll blame every single woman that he's been with but what he won't do is look at himself and and take a like a real deep dive into himself and ask why am i having the same relationship outcomes no matter what woman i'm i'm with i've been with 50 or however x amount of women all of my outcomes have been the same why he's not going to do that and and if he does he's going to be like oh well cuz she did this and she did that and this one did this and lied about that they'll blame it on the women but they're not going to go within and that's very dangerous and i don't feel like black women cultivate an environment where these males feel like they have to do the work jeezy apparently clearly needs to go do some self-healing work this yeah. is now not an issue of black women not being good enough for him this submissive is not an enough. issue yep this has nothing to do with black women not being submissive enough this has to do with jeezy being broken and not doing the healing work. And a lot of black men don't think they have to do that. They, they won't do it. They don't get counseling. If we look at the, the um, statistics, black men are not getting therapy. If you suggest that they get therapy, there's a problem. But then it's like, okay, are you perfect? Because you don't seem to be very resilient. A lot, of them feel, a lot of them feel. A lot of them feel, oh, it's not that I'm saying I'm perfect. It's just everybody else is the problem. Listen, I, yeah, and that's a, a that's a narcissistic mindset to think that everybody is the problem with you, although you keep having these same problems. These same problems keep popping up in your relationship dynamics, but the issue ain't you, it's everybody else. It's like, no, you don't get to try to act like walk the planet acting like there's no need for you to go get some psychological help, even though we're seeing the manifestations of you needing to get some psychological help. True. But black women like we don't hold them accountable we don't hold that them accountable we we don't even if it comes up in our personal relationships how many black women have dated a man who displays pop problematic toxic behavior traits and she doesn't introduce them to counseling how many times do we see that she just tried to throw coochie on them and coochie's not gonna fix them now i've done it i have done it i've told a person look I'm not going to do this toxicity. So you go either come to counseling and if counseling don't work, I'm out. But if you don't come to counseling, I'm out anyway. You need to go to counseling. Now, even, obviously, I was out anyway. So the counseling must have not worked. No, <laughs> and it's yeah. not going to work if you're dealing with a person who's not receptive to change, who doesn't want to see their own flaws, who don't want to realize that they are the problem and get some help. If Jeezy was really essayed as a child, he should have been in some therapy. And you realize that as, a, as an adult, you should have been in therapy before you been in a relationship with any of these women. And can we speak? Can we both agree on this? There is no excuse for him to not engage in therapy. You got money for change. You got money for cars. You got money for hoes. You got money for everything else. What he uh, even in that interview, he said, I paid ten million dollars to get everybody out of jail. So you got all this money. But you can't go take some time and go sit on the couch in a the therapist's office. You can't no. take a year or a year and a half off and just get your head together. No, but you can sit in a video and say that you have a fear of intimacy and lay the stage for everybody to sympathize with you rather than the women that you turn into baby mom. He can do that, though. He can sit up there and talk about his intimacy issues and his toxic relationship with his mother and saying he was essayed at a, at a young age. Yeah, you can sit up there and say that. But are you going to get some counseling to deal with it, though? Exactly. No. 
Because even in this discussion, he's not taking accountability for anything that he's done. Like when he talks about the relationship that he had and the demise of it with Jeannie Mai, does it seem like he's taking some accountability? No. Who was the reason that made y'all go to therapy? Whether because of her behavior or because of your toxicity with your pattern of creating babies' mamas and broken homes. And and you have not even been married that long. So honestly, like, who are you to just throw your marriage away like that? Like, wait a minute, you paraded this woman in front of the world. Y'all became relationship experts. And by the way, I am so sick of everybody thinking they're a relationship expert. Oh my God, yeah. I am so, I don't know who told everybody to get a mic and, and a broadcaster pro and a stream yard account, but I'm going to need y'all to go back. Listen, UPS is hiring. FedEx is hiring. I'm going to need y'all to go. I'm going to need some of y'all to go find something else to do because it's like all through my timeline. I can't get away from it. Everybody's an expert. I find it interesting how the males who have the most relationship failure outcomes, regardless to the race of the women, are the loudest voices on relationship advice. Yeah. That's the problem. Because it's like, okay, well, Anybody who is willing to put in the work can look up the statistics and see that your track record for relationships is horrible. Yet you've become the loudest voice for like Kevin Samuel should have never been a thing. I'm sorry. Like it, he should have never and he should have never been embraced by black women. Like this is why I talk about the self-esteem because within our closet of issues is a big bag of low self-esteem skeletons and they're pouring out the closet. Like to me, black women's low self-esteem skeletons are tumbling out of the closet. All of these things that we're doing is showing a lack of self-value. It's, it's, it's showing like a lack and, of self-value. And wanting to be validated and wanting to be accepted. But what a lot of black women got to realize is that it don't matter if you're the church girl, if you're the hoe, if you, Whatever role you think these niggas want, these niggas don't even know what they want. And, and speaking of the Kevin Samuels thing, I went, I have, of course, went back and looked at old content. The content that was focused on men bettering themselves, that was actually, honestly, pretty good yeah. um, and pretty interesting. He wasn't making no money. No, that's why he made that video and said that if he comes out because black men don't want to own what they do, so if he just switches it up and talk about women, then he'll make a lot of money. And that's what happened. But the reason I like it, the reason I liken it to low self-esteem is because I like to compare white women's reaction to Andrew Tate, mm. who is one of their sons, yes. and black women's reaction to Kevin Samuels, who is one of their sons. White women got Andrew Tate's ass up off the internet. They said, Wait. absolutely not. You are Wait. done. They said cancel him completely. He didn't even have the run that Kevin Samuels did. Black women embraced Kevin Samuels. A man who had two re marriage failures, two of them, in which he did not even meet the qualifications of his own qualifications for a high value man. He didn't even meet him. He didn't. Ain't showed no credentials at all. No self-help at all. No history of getting no therapy. No explanation for why he ain't taking care of his kids. No explanation for why between two women that he married, he, what, four years? <laughs> of marriage between the two of them in which you were not the provider. Black women rushed to, him, to them to get degraded by him. White women said, absolutely not. You're right. You're, you're absolutely you know, get right. Get your ass off this internet. They, they said, you go get your ass all the way off this internet and British white women. Oh, they were having it the least. And the crazy thing is, I mean, if we want to be honest, there is no money in black male self-improvement. If you want to go into that space, there's no money there. The money is in criticizing women. That's where the money's at. But like, yeah, to, because but if you're criticizing women, you don't have to deal with your own toxicity. In, in another show that I'm thinking about too, I don't know if you've ever heard of them hardly initiated. They started yeah. off. First off, they invited me on a podcast, but I don't think they really knew who I was. <laughs> and then they left me on red because I was going to flip some shit over. <laughs> I was excited. I was staying quiet, too, because I was like, I'm going to flip this shit. But, um, but no shade to them. No shade to them. But, you know, they started off more male self-improvement. 
And then what they found was they didn't start making money until their fan base became like 70% women. And now it's a bunch of women calling in all the time like, how do I get a man? How do I get ready for marriage? Mind you, those two gentlemen are not married, not in a committed relationship, no kind of psychology education, no proof of nothing. And it was funny when Tony Gaskins went on their show and he was like, yeah, I'm so sick of all these people with no credentials and no education trying to speak on marriage. It's not required. And he said it to their face. I got to give him respect. He said it right to their face. As he should have. But you know what? If... If black men knew that black women were going to say, okay, where is your credentials? Show me your relationship history. Show me how you qualify to be giving this advice in order for me to listen to it. They would not be sitting up there in front of microphones because they would know black women aren't going to listen to you because you don't qualify. True. But the reality is black women have no standards, no expectations and no boundaries. The only requirement they have is that you are black and male. That is it. That's why they will sit up there and say, how can I be ready for marriage? But they won't say who's getting him ready to be a husband. Yes. Black men need to learn how to be husbands more than black women need to learn how to be wives. Why do I say that? Because if you look at black women when they with other races of men, they have no problem being wives. They only have problems being wives to the men who don't value marriage to begin with and who are not capable, effective husbands, regardless to the race of the women. If we look at black men, when they go out, they have more failure than they do with black women. It's statistical fact. It's Yet true. black women take the femininity courses for males who are not masculine. Like, why are you trying to be feminine, learn how to be feminine for a man who's not masculine? Or, trying to, or trying to learn how to be feminine from a pearl. Who the hell elevated pearl? Like, oh, let's not even get on the damn and, thing. And, and, and what I love, and what I love about that, her whole her whole shtick is that now that she's getting on like CNN and, and in all these spaces that she does not qualify for, especially at 27 years old with no life experience, other white women are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was about to say. White women will drag her. They drag, <laughs> they drag her. And they definitely let her know you're not attractive at all. Like they make that clear. Like, who are you to think? Yeah, no, her, she could never compete in her own group ever. Never, she could never. never compete at all. She would she would flop before she even started. Like <laughs> uh, born, just born on the wall. Lord, let's get into this. Cause you look, I did some listen, I did some commentary that I'm gonna put on Patreon, but yeah, we gotta get into this because mm. so um, you know, we talked about this last night. We had a lot of breaking news uh people. But I want to start off by showing that the abuse. You're the first one I saw who actually had the images in their videos. Like you're the first person that I saw who had those images in, in the video, in their videos. A lot of people, I think, just talked about it and didn't wait like for video images to come out or anything like that. I think they're just talking. Now, I don't know. Maybe some other people did. But I saw the images on your stream first. Yeah, yeah. Because I was on it. I, I was like, nah, it's, it's some more to this. So. I always I, I, I was talking last night on the show. The abuse actually started February of 2022. Here we are right here. Um, and just to, to give the, the picture context, um, he had been yelling and screaming at her all night. Didn't let her sleep. Was mad because of a bikini photo that she took that she didn't even show anybody. She just showed him. But because she took this bikini photo, he flipped out in the car. She thought he was going to crash the car. And when she got to the bottom of the steps, you know, we, we see what happened. But what's crazy to me is this is February. She got pregnant around May of 2022. Yeah. And so I'm going to say this. I know she loved her baby. I hate she got pregnant by him. I hate that she did. Well, you know, I was going to say a lot of these dudes are fake, but it kind of sounds like his mask fell off before she became pregnant. It did. He did. It and is. that's what I was saying when her mother came out and said, oh, well, she told his brother that um, his brother, Sarunas, you know, the one off of um, Insecure. Yes. Um, yes. If that it, that he had been abusive for a year. OK, so how did a baby become introduced into this relationship? That, that's you. like I'm not blaming Kiki. I'm not. But 
if a man is abusing you, why would you then go create a baby? Why? I would I would not have, his baby would not have made it. It would have been terminated. Cause when I when I read her statements in, in her um her TPO, she literally said like he choke slammed her. So ma'am, you still wanted to have a baby with this nigga? He met at her at the bottom of the steps. This nigga was up all night screaming. Like that that shit is crazy. Yeah. But he appears to be the nice guy. He appears to be so soft. And these are the dudes that they tell you like that you need to pick. Because remember Tyler Perry, oh, if you meet a dude who can only pay the light bill, this is how dudes act when they yep. can only pay the light bill. Now, yep. they want you to believe that the wealthy men are running around doing this. And now, do wealthy men put their hands on women? Obviously. We, yeah, we know yeah. they do. But it's more profound in men who lack resources, who cannot measure up to the women that they are dating. This is why you do not date down. And it doesn't always have to be monetarily. It can be looks wise. I've been with men who were very insecure because every time we would go out, people would say like, I, this was the, the dude I been with first. I'll, I lost my virginity. So I'll just tell the quick story. This dude was used to dating low tier women. He was used to, he was used to getting attention because he was a football player in college. But then when I dated him, we couldn't even walk into the corner store without the Asians telling them, um, she's way too pretty for you. Why are you with him? You should be fortunate she's with you. We wow. would go to clubs. It would be white women, black women, all types of people who would be like, oh, my God, your girlfriend is so beautiful. You're lucky to be with her. He wasn't used to that. So he started becoming verbally abusive. That's when I cut it off. Like we were in a club. He was there was white women coming up to him saying, oh, your girlfriend is so hot. She looks like a playmate, yada, yada, yada. His response was, then you date her. The relationship ended after that. He should have been proud. No, he was like, then you date her. Wow. The relationship ended after that. I'll tell you that. I don't blame you. It ended you. after that. Because that's where it starts. That's where the abuse starts. It doesn't necessarily always begin physical. It begins with a man showing signs of his insecurity, showing signs that he feels inferior to you, showing signs that he feels like he's devalued, like he's less than. That's when it escalates into this behavior. And for me, I'm not going to stay around when you're verbally abusive because it's going to turn into physical abuse. I dated a man who would always, um, he was older than me, like 17 years older than me. Oh, wow. So he thought this was a dynamic where he could take advantage of me. Um, he didn't like that I was smarter than him. So he would try to downplay my intelligence. Like whenever we got into an argument, it would be, oh, you're stupid. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about, this, that, and the third. The, these are signs of where physical abuse begins. It begins verbally <laughs> because they have to break you down to be susceptible to the physical abuse. If they can't break you down mentally, they can't break you down physically because you're not going to stay around. You're not going to be in a cycle with a man and he hasn't broken you mentally and emotionally first. So that's where they start. They start with beating you down emotionally and mentally so that they can physically abuse you. And that's the dynamic we have in the community. Black men have thoroughly broken down black women's self-esteem in numerous different ways, numerous different ways. So now you have a very abusive, physical abusive dynamic between black men and black women in terms of the black femicide rate. Absolutely. Because black women go through this cycle. They're willing to go through this cycle. Like they'll be abusive and degrade you, then call you queens and talk about how they love you. But toe tag you physically, especially when you having a baby and the cycle repeats. And the cycle repeats. So now when we go to this incident that happened uh, five days ago on November 5th, mind you, Kiki, Kiki and uh, uh, Darius broke up in October, right? Of course, he made copies of the keys to the house, of course. So we already right. know that. Um, a little bit before 11 a.m., she's in a bed chilling. 
And this fool busts in the house and busts through the door, talking about he want to take the baby to a football game. She says no. He then drags her from the bedroom to the living room here, and we, you know, we see the rest. Yeah, like there's no way. And Kiki didn't even seem like the type of woman, even though all types of women, there, any type of woman can be in a DV. Yeah. Like we're just going to get that. You have attorneys, doctors who are in DV programs. <laughs> so any type of woman, and I don't mean to laugh because it's not a laughing matter, but it the type of woman doesn't matter. What matters is if he can break her down mentally, if he can break her down emotionally, if he can destroy her self-worth, if he can make her feel like she's stuck with him, which is what black men do. We know we hear them saying nobody else wants you. Oh, these other men, we the only people who want you. DV. Yeah. DV. That's how they keep you in that cycle. They abuse you, beat you down, tell you nobody else wants you, and then you get stuck. That's one of the reasons black women won't open their options. And the fear of, oh, these are the males who were graping you on a plantation. It's a lot of mind screwing. Black men mind fuck black women. I'll just say that. And they do a very good job of it. They do a very good job of it because black women put too much stock in what comes out of their mouths. And they should not. They shouldn't. <laughs> but that's how they're in. That's why they won't date out. They won't date out because black men convinced them nobody wants them but them. Nobody is going to understand you but me. They don't understand your plight as a black woman when really black men don't even recognize that black women have a plight. They don't. They don't even they recognize don't even black recognize women. They yeah. Don't. And, and if, if they won't even acknowledge that you have a plight, they cannot understand your plight as a black woman if they don't even see that you have one. But black women seem to think, oh, the only people who go understand me are the black men. I can't send no relationship with no white man and he can't relate to me. White men can relate to black women better than black men can. Nobody is going to convince me of that. I actually think, and I've said this, even when I was against interracial dating, I've said this multiple times, black women are more compatible with white men yeah. than they are with black men. They are. They, they just are. It tends to work out when they do get together. It tends, it tends to work. Yeah, because you have the two people who represent the same thing in their community. White men are the backbone to the white community. Black women are the black, are the backbone. White men are the go getters in the white community. Black women are the go getters in the black community. Like there, you can you can do the parallels all the time. You can do you can do them. Uh, white women are far more treasonous than white men are. I guarantee you that. Especially like because white women will date out more than white men will. White men have an allegiance to their whiteness more so than white women do. Black women have an allegiance to their blackness more than black men do. <laughs> I mean, it's, we can go on and on with the comparisons, really. You're right. You're right. Let me let me ask you this, because, um, you know, now um, Darius's brother, he spoke out and then he deleted his tweet. Now he's being exposed by his ex-girlfriend. Saying, oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, hold up. Let me find it. I knew the rabbit hole was going to go deep, too. Oh, oh, yeah. And apparently she was on Insecure as well. I just don't remember her. Yeah, I want to see her because I remember her because I just binge watched all the seasons. So if she was somebody on there who mattered, I will. I will. Yeah, I downloaded a whole bunch of them when I went out of the country. You know, it's a long flight. So I was like, let me just watch Insecure. And download it. I don't like Europe either because they don't get Hulu out there. Really? Yeah, they were trying. They were trying to suppress my VPN out there. <laughs> they oh, really man. were. I don't know what kind of role she oh, had. Oh, I wonder if she's the one in that. I think it was like Tasha. Is she was she Tasha and from the when that Lawrence got with? I don't after? know. So I've, I've never seen. <laughs> yeah. her I think she is. I think she's that chick Tasha from Insecure. I think she looks like her. Now, here's her statement right here. 
There was this was there was a repost of a post I made on yesterday. There are situations where you laugh to keep from crying. Let me give clarity. I would never laugh at anyone that is subject to domestic abuse, female or male. As it's known, abuse comes in different definitions, silent and physical. Only the people enduring such behavior truly understand the effects. Women have been manipulated, abused, lied on for centuries and put their head down for fear of not being believed. We need to stop being afraid. I may not be at the highest platform in my career just yet to be heard and or supported by the public, but whatever the time comes, everyone will listen. God is in control of my... Yeah, it definitely sounds like she's saying she was abused. Yep. She was definitely abused. Yep. All day long. Yeah, but she looks like that that chick um, Tasha that Lawrence w w was with briefly um, before he went on his binge of white women. I don't know if you watched the show, uh -uh, but, I never seen it. but that's who she looks like from. Um, unless I see a clearer picture, but that's who she who she looks like. So, what do you think the next steps for Kiki should be? What should she do? I think she needs to get ease on down the road. That's what she needs to do. Keep it, take your baby and your full custody and your restraining order and ease on down the road to somebody else who ain't going to abuse you. She needs to date and mate on her level. But first, she needs to go within and ask herself, why did she continue to be in a abusive relationship and why did she create a child? in it, knowing that this man was abusive. And the reason I say that is because if you don't take accountability as a woman for your dating experiences, you are going to repeat them. Yes. Like I've had to do that. And it's, it's very difficult. Like nobody wants to take accountability because nobody wants to say that they're wrong. And I understand that as humans, we want to walk around in perfection and never be wrong, but we are wrong and we do make mistakes. And there's a number of different reasons why we make mistakes. I wasn't taught to have standard expectations and boundaries. My mother wasn't taught to have standard expectations and boundaries. I don't believe that black women are teaching their daughters standards, expectations, and boundaries. And the reason why I don't think they're teaching them that is because black women are too desperate for male validation and mm. standards, expectations, and boundaries are basically the antithesis. Am I saying it right? The antithesis to it? Yeah. 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 It's the antithesis to um, worship and chasing oh, yeah. me for validation. If you're desperate for validation from a man, your standards, expectations, and boundaries is going to impede your ability to get that validation. So I don't think that this has been taught to Black girls at all. I think worship, chase men, be your ride or die, get the ring, make him marry you. That's the narrative. And so I think Black women come from a place of desperation, and they find themselves in these situations being desperate, only caring about a relationship rather than the quality of it. Like even if you read, when you read over the statement by the turkey leg hut woman, does it sound like she had any standards and expectations and boundaries? It don't. No. It mm -mm. don't. I mean, they uh, there's words to saying her husband was slinging dick all through that restaurant and rather than check him, she put a dress code on the women. It, it's like, girl, like, come on. Like, and, and, how long are you going to blame women for your man's infidelity? Because all you're doing is reinforcing his. If he can cheat and the woman is to blame, he's going to keep cheating. Point blank. Point blank. I knew something was wrong then when she was like, y'all coming in here with these short skirts and you're barely dressed. And it's like, ma'am, I mean, if you want to have a dress code for your business then have a dress code for your business, whatever. But at the end of the day, it don't matter if this woman is in a mini skirt or, uh, or a gown. Suit. Or down to her ankles. If he want to cheat, he gonna cheat. Yeah, and like that's what I'm saying. It's that's what I'm saying. There's uh, mental. I, 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 I'm a black woman too, so please understand. I'm saying this out of love to black women. I've been here before. Black women are mentally retarded when it comes to men, especially if you think that a man's propensity to cheat is based on what a woman is wearing. You have to be mentally retarded to think that the clothes are coming off anyway. If they cheat in, it don't matter what she got on. He don't want her to have on nothing. And she won't when he's cheating with her. Why are you changing the dress code? Like, But it's like, that's how I know she doesn't have any standards, expectations, and boundaries. You have none for this man. If your solution is not to check your husband, 
the solution doesn't seem to ever be to a woman to check your husband. A woman should be able to come into your restaurant naked. And that should have no impact on your wedding vows with your man. That's true. No impact on it. He shouldn't be easy. He made a commitment to you. He should be honoring that commitment. What are you going to do? Lock him in a cage in a basement so he can never see another female? That Thank should have been her first indication that this wasn't the man for her. If you got to change the way women dress so that your husband ain't slinging dick all through your restaurant, then that man should not be your husband. Well, here's what well, I think this is the issue then that, that we, we got to speak about, too. I think a lot of women feel like if I have standards, expectations and boundaries, I'm not going to find a man. But it's I think you got to be OK, but I think you gotta be okay with that. Yeah, you have to be OK with that. And the only reason why b b black women would think that is because they want black men. If you mm -hmm. open up your your options and stop just looking at black men, then yeah you might it might be an issue finding one it might be harder but you're gonna find one you're gonna find one you but either way do you want a man or do you want a healthy relationship and i really think black women just want a man any man pick a man my man my man my man my husband my man i think she was one of those type of women i think she was and I don't even follow them like that, but I think she was one of the, my man, my man, my man, or the Tabitha Browns, I don't trust women around my man. You don't trust your man. Oh, I, oh, I believe Tabitha Brown's husband has already cheated on her. Oh, he has. He has. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. done multiple things out of pocket, but she's still, oh, I don't trust women around my man. Just tell us you don't trust your husband without telling us you don't trust your husband, yeah. and rightfully so. Point blank, especially now that she retired him, which, okay, he was close to retirement anyway, whatever, but he ain't got nothing to do. So while you at work, what is he going to be doing? And you got money now. So now he's now he ain't got to work and y'all got money to spend and he looks good for his age. And I remember she no, no, I remember they they went on an anniversary that kind of way, but I get it. <laughs> yeah, like they went on an anniversary trip. And they were on the beach and all the women were commenting like, don't let him post without a shirt. Girl, they finna all be in his DMs. And I'm just like, there is no accountability yeah. on him at all. Like, None. <laughs> even the story of their friend that sat in his lap. How long did she sit in his lap before he pushed her off? Why does she feel comfortable sitting on his lap? He is a married man. It is up to him to check these women that's up to him to uphold those vows this one's in oh my god it's, it's just like check your man like I, i'm not about to go to a woman that didn't make a commitment to me because a man yeah. who made a commitment to me stepped out no he's getting checked he's getting checked and i'm probably going to release him back to the streets <laughs> if i just see that he just have like you want to be sitting up here working dick slang and dick through the restaurant. Okay. You want to be single. Don't let me stop you, but don't think you about to double back over here though. It, if exactly. you think there's something better out there, do not let me stand in your way. My nig. don't let me stand in your way. Go no to way. the streets from whence you came. I mean, That's yeah, all I'm, gonna do. I'm not going to chase you. I'm going to release you right back to the streets where you came from. That's where you're going to go. And listen, that's that. Hey, that's the best way to be. Um, I'll read a little bit of her statement. She said, I've been quiet for so long. I can no longer hold my silence. This war I've been fighting behind closed doors, all while pretending to the world that everything is perfect. I'm living in hell on earth. Abuse, manipulation, lies, deceit, gaslighting and narcissism. God, I feel like narcissism is on the rise. And you changing dress codes while you living in hell on earth in your marriage. Thank you. Girl. But, this world thinks he's a man who stands on business, but y'all are mistaken. The man me and my children know is cruel, abusive emotionally and mentally and completely void of any emotion. Oh, this nigga's a psychopath. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, this, uh, I'm thinking this sounds like sociopath, psychopath, one of those paths. It sounds like it. From the time you we wake up. Any the, emotion? From the time we wake up to the time we close our eyes at night, we're fighting for our peace and sanity. Um, I admit I, I played my part in hindering and hiding his behavior, but I'm choosing me today. I'll die behind this truth and I'll lose everything to finally have peace. Wow. 
Now, let me ask you something. Do you think she required him to go to counseling at any point in this relationship, despite knowing that this man was void of emotion? <laughs> like, do you think she told him, look, bruh, if I'm going to stay married to you, I'm going to need you to roll up to the therapist's office. I need you to do that and deal with the fact that you're void of any emotion because this is not normal. Like, how long were you sitting in this relationship with this man who was terrorizing your home and your children? How long were you sitting up with this man not requiring him to do no self-work as he's cheap and steal money out your restaurant? Like, absolutely not. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I, I've had I've had bad relationships. There's been times where I didn't have standards, expectations, and boundaries. And, and those are the reasons why I developed it. Those are the reasons why. Because you... You just can't. You just can't. And I think I think maybe she was thinking like, oh, I don't want to lose my livelihood and the cars and the gifts and the purses and the this and the that. But listen, you're you can't put a price on your own sanity. No, it's not. It's not. Worth, and if somebody going to dangle that shit over your head, you really don't have it anyway. So fuck it. And it, it sounds like he came into the relationship with less than she did because yep. we already know black women marry down. They not marrying up. They just want a man. Just give me somebody I can call my man. Give me somebody I can say my husband and I'm a wife and I'm good. I bet you she'll probably be paying him alimony. I don't know what them, them laws are like in Texas. Now I've heard. Oh, I know. I heard that from you when you were talking about Derek Jackson. Weren't you talking about the laws in Texas and how child support is distributed and alimony and stuff? I thought that you were talking no, about Calif that. I know that about California is 50-50. I'm not sure. Hold on. I can look it up real quick about Texas. Let's see. Yeah, because I thought you had did the video when you said Derek Jackson moving to Texas was um, kind of strategic because they have like a cap on the amount of child support that they get. Like child 9, support, 000, yes. 9,000, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why Tristan uh, Tristan Thompson's baby mama moved from Texas and went to uh, California because she was only going to get, I want to say maybe 2500 if she had said it. It was going to be something real low, but she she moved her ass to California real quick. Uh, Texas. Yeah, she still didn't get as much as she wanted. She only got like 9000 right? Yeah, and honestly, to have to, I don't I don't know. People sell their souls for a dollar. I don't. I wouldn't want to deal with it, though. And I mean, nine thousand a month in California, you still poor. So I mean, yes. Yes. you might want to run that back to Texas. It <laughs> now that you got your money, double back to Texas. <laughs> so double that back you got to Texas. Part of your life, because yeah, that cost um, of living in California is hitting. It, it, it hits. Okay, so I found it. So, no matter how much the paying spouse earns, support can never exceed. $5,000 per month or 20% of their average monthly income, whichever is smaller. That's disgusting. <laughs> that is disgusting. Even if kids are involved. Yeah, it don't matter. They're not going over 20% of what you make. This, I don't know why women are getting married. I don't. Like back in the day when you could acquire wealth through getting married, okay, that made sense. But I don't know why women are getting married today. Like I, I don't understand the appeal. Because of culture pushes you to do it. Because societal pressure is, is 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 very real. It's very real. Even like, um, with having children. You know, some of us we don't want kids, and people, society's like, well, what are you gonna do? What is your life gonna be about? What are you gonna accomplish? And I'm like, am I supposed to go crawl in a hole and die if I don't have kids? Like, I don't understand. But the circumstances for black women who are married with children is not different than the circumstances for single mothers. That's the thing. It's not different. It may appear to be different when you're in that marriage. But when you get out, emphasis on the when you get yep. out, your circumstance is about to match that single mother. And you can sit up there and say baby mom as much as you want to and say you are ex-wife. Who cares? You're in the same position that she's in. You you ain't one up in nothing. Let me let me ask you this. Wasn't it you that said the average marriage in the U.S. only lasts eight years? 
I think it said seven years is, seven. is the average length of a of a marriage. Yeah, seven years. So why, so why people still acting like their marriage is really for a lifetime? It's only going to be about seven, five to seven years if you're lucky. If you're lucky. So this is why I said like we have to, as women, check our intellectual faculties. Um, because why are we promoting marriage as the end all be all? And you literally, in most situations, you only get seven years out of it. <laughs> like, so, okay. So it's like, all right, she became a baby mama instantly, but you about to become one in seven years. So you just delayed your process by seven years, but you ended up at the same place that she is at and exactly. black women are still running around here talking about oh let's get married oh well marriage is better than being a baby mama yeah until you get divorced and then you're a baby mama too they want to redo the definition of a baby mama just so they can make it appear that women who became a baby mama through marriage are better and it's like no if you look at what a baby mama is it's a woman who's raising her child without a husband or a man you are still a baby mama if you are divorced, Kim Kardashian is an ex-wife, but she is also a baby mama. Not all ex-wives are baby mamas. The ones who don't have children are not baby mamas. The ones who do, you're a baby mama. Once you get out of that marriage, you are then his ex-wife slash baby mama. Mariah Carey is Nick Cannon's baby mama. It does not matter what anybody says. She has the same outcome as all of his other, uh, as all of his, his other women. And quite frankly, I think it's worse when you were married to this man, but your outcome is still the same as that unmarried single mom over there. I agree. I would you want to, but I, your I circumstance agree. should be different because you got the ring. You got the ring. And on top of that, he ain't even coming to see his kid. But damn, he got so many. You can't really. That's a whole nother. We're going to see a documentary about these kids in, in 15 years. I'm just waiting on it because this. It, yeah. It, it Mariah Carey is in the same situation. She just got more money. And she That's acquired true. that money before she even met up with Nick Cannon. So her money ain't got nothing to do with Nick Cannon. Her money is her own, but she's still in the same position. She's the exact same position. And I saw an interview that Nick Cannon did recently. Um, it was with Waka Flocka and somebody else. And he was talking about how he regretted doing that movie, Love Don't Cost a Thing, because mm -hmm. he was seen as like corny after that. And I said to myself, I wonder, did he do all the tattoos, all the baby mamas, all the kids to fit in with black male culture? Likely. Probably. Yeah. It sounds like it. It does. It sounds like he did. That is the culture. Because look at John Morant. John Morant was two parent home, married, privileged to a degree. And look at what he running around doing. Succumbing to black male culture. And this is why I tell black women, the outcome of your male children is not primarily due to how you raise him. Because your influence is the weakest influence on him at the end of the day. But that black male culture, though, that's gonna hit hard. It's gonna hit hard. <laughs> like, outcast, yeah. But that would yeah. also speak to that chameleon personality that you spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. They do. I really do believe that if a psychologist was to, it couldn't be black, obviously, because we already have Francis Cress Welsing. And if you look at Francis Cress Welsing's interview, her leaned more toward black male worship then okay. let's figure out what's wrong with black men. Now, if you had somebody like Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who said the problem is black male antisocial behavior, he got what was going on. But then that gets shunned as propaganda, although me and you in the last video literally lined up how their behavior 100% fits antisocial personality. You could do it with borderline personality too, going into the chameleon effect and we looked at that we see who got the weakest self-image on the planet black man point blank <laughs> like who's and, and even, coddled the most who got the most yeah. trauma recipe mm -hmm. for narcissism yeah so there would have to be a psychologist that is not a black male worshiper who studies the behavior and mindset and ways of black men i promise you they would be comorbid uh, comorbid mental illnesses one would be antisocial, one would be borderline, and the other would probably be narcissism. Probably. And there's probably a few more, too. And it's crazy, too, because um, I don't know if I told you, but I was thinking about going back to school and, like, getting my PhD. I was really thinking yeah, about it. And, like, I don't know. It, 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 
the more I talk to people, the more I interview people, I'm becoming more very, like very, very curious of like how people think, why we make the decisions that we do, because it's it's just it's just it's interesting. Even as you talk about antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, I'm like, damn, is she describing my father? Like I feel, I feel like because yeah, I've seen him go into rooms and like change, and it's like, damn, who is this? Oh, this is a whole nother personality. And then we leave, and then it's like back to being mean. It's like, well, fuck, okay. Like, I don't think that I ever really knew who the who they truly were, who the black men that I were with, who they truly were, especially not the last one. I don't think that a lot of black women truly knows who these males are, nor do these um, uh, these males want them to know who they are. That's why a lot of people, a lot of them hide. I think a lot of them don't like who they are. They know that who they are is not acceptable. So they create personas that they think is more acceptable. But like I said, you can't keep the same, a mask on forever. You can't. Sure. Eventually the mask is going to drop. Sure. And a lot of them do end up dropping their mask. But I think black women don't look at it from a psychological standpoint. Why do I not know this man? Why was I not able to anticipate his behavior? Because you were dealing with a chameleon. You weren't dealing with a real person. So that this is why I'm so against people saying, oh, vet, 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 vet. How do you vet past the psychological disorder? Multiple psychological disorders. How do you do that? You really can't. You can't because vetting is subject to what they're telling you. If this person is wearing a whole mask and pretending to be what you want, you can't vet past that. And I think that there shouldn't even be any discussion on, oh, well, you just need to vet because that implies that the reason you had this experience is because you somehow didn't vet properly. So all it does is put the accountability and the blame on the woman saying she's doing something wrong and she should have done X, Y, and Z to get a better outcome. No, these are males who have psychological disorders. These are males who wear masks. These are males who pretend to be something that they are not. And this is widely known that people fake because you have shows like who the, who the bleep did I marry? Yeah. Who I married an ex murderer. Like you have too many. There are too many, way too many confirmations that people wear masks, people fake, people pretend, you know, people build a person. You can't bet people. You it's can't. True. Like you can talk to a team of FBI profilers they're profiling behaviors and mindsets that were already revealed. That's what they're doing, but they're not vetting anybody. They're telling you which mentalities match up with, with, with which behaviors. But psychologists ain't even vetting people. Yeah, you can give them a psychological exam. Yeah, you can do that. You can try to give them a psychological exam. You can try to do a number of different things, but you can't vet to the degree of predicting behavior. No, you, you can't. Can profile. You can profile. And I'm suggesting that black women start profiling black men. I think they should. I think it would be very safe for them to profile because at this point, the behaviors are so common and appearing in so many different ones. The only way you would be able to accurately vet is to profile them. That's the only way you could do it. It's to profile them. Just assume that they are a certain way because they are black. Are black women going to do that? No. They're not, but you would have to. You would have to profile them. That's the only way. The same way you would profile serial killers and other things, you would have you would have to. And I don't want to compare them to that, but you would have to build a profile on the felonious-minded, abusive bandit who's going to abandon his children. You would have to run a profile on them. There it is. I don't, I don't think I don't think we're about to do that. I don't. I wanted to get your view on this. Did you see this clip about Terrell Owens and uh, Chad Ochocinco? No, but I'm willing to bet those plus size women were white. <laughs> oh, I, hold on, I'm gonna let you hear this. Damn, yeah. man, you know, like, like yeah, I always pretty, tell yeah, people, big girls, yeah, hey, big girls need love too, man. They do, they you do. Know what I mean? They do. Yeah. Well, we went, hey, we went by, we went through about what, seventeen women in, in what, in, in twelve hours. Was it seven? Was it seventeen? Seventeen. They're disgusting. Hours, uh, <laughs> I, I, my mind ain't good, dog. I thought yeah, it was like yeah, I don't forget nothing like that, boy. Seventeen women. Seventeen. 
Them I want to see the comment section. Oh, man, I thought that, man. My thing is, Chad Ochocinco, ain't he married or engaged? That's incredibly disrespectful. This is disgusting. And I feel as, as though black men are kind of like the only ones who promote this. These are black male celebrities and they're promoting having sex with 17 different women in 12 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll forget that. Hold on, let me hey, get I, 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 was, I, was, I was done uh, after about two or three. King blood. I, I ain't even getting on Krishan because mm -mm. that's a whole mess. Dang, it, it skipped. Okay, but but what, what got me about it was then um, T.O. tried to double back and said, oh, we was just playing. No, nah, you weren't just playing. Y'all was dead ass. No. I, look, do they really feel like big women need love to? No. There's there's a certain set of um, personality traits that they think come with big, big women. Like they're, they have lower self-esteem. They're more desperate for a man. They're more willing to do things sexually just to keep a man. Like there's a lot of negative um, characteristics and personality traits attached to bigger women and i don't think that they're showing them love i think they're targeting them i want to know how many of them were white well they said they were in the dr so i'm sure a few of them were yeah, yeah they can still be white in the dr yeah. they absolutely can i just think this is disgusting deplorable behavior i'm tired of seeing it i really am i'm tired of seeing it i genuinely am like i'm deeply disturbed by black culture I actually am. And I think anybody with a rational mind who can observe it and try to look at it through a spiritual lens will be very much disturbed. Very much. Like our cultural dynamic is just demonic. It really is. It's very disturbing. Very, very disturbing. Like where the males can just sit up and talk about how they ran through 12 women, 17 women at 12 hours. And I wanted to see the con I wanted to see the comment section because I wanted to see how many men were condemning them for that behavior. I oh no, we don't mean condemn enough for that. I wonder how many condoms they used while they was running through seven hours. That's what I said. Because we know athletes don't use condoms like that anyway. Now nah, they weren't using no condoms. They were definitely they definitely paid a little extra so they could run raw. Definitely. Well, yeah, this, this is disgusting. It's just really repulsive. It's I, I I don't see anything about it being attractive. I really don't. And I think that as black women, we we really have to set a higher standard. We have to. We just don't have a choice. Like, this is not sustainable. <laughs> How is this the same sustainable for a community dynamic? How? It's not. One man said some things are just better left unsaid. Hashtag TMI. Another man said y'all mad because he said took one for the team because she was big. Get healthy and lose weight. If I don't like big girls, that's my preference. And I and don't tell me I can't say it publicly because you women hate broke dudes and will yell it at the top of your lungs on every social media profile. But if a white person came out and said they were undisciplined, uh, a sexually undisciplined plantation bugs, they would have a problem with it. But they're promoting that though. That's what they're saying that they have, that they are. Real Estate Shark said, damn, Chad, y'all bragging about stupid ish like y'all in high school and you got a ring on your finger, bro. You making us black males look bad. I expect more out of you guys. I'm like, yeah, Chad Ochocinco is married. Like this, that's not a good look. This is a disgusting look. <laughs> and then I, I don't like that people are just saying they should be quiet about it. They just shouldn't say it. Okay, but they're still doing it, though. Still the effects of it is still going to reverberate through the community, though. Like, really? Because if they pick up a disease, who are they about to bring that disease to? Black women. Right. Who are who have the most STDs for a married demographic? Because they men are more likely to cheat when they marry than when they single because they know you go stay. They know they go get all them benefits, even if they I mean, again, this woman was running this um, restaurant, building it up while her husband was slanging felonious dick all through it and stealing out the cash register, terrorizing the house and being emotionally void. And she still stayed with him. So, I mean, maybe she got to her breaking point, though. Maybe she, maybe she got the ring, her. though. I mean, at least she got a husband and I don't know. So, <laughs> let me just say, at least she was picked, okay? But what... But what got me about 
Chad and Shannon and this whole thing, they got on Brittany Renner case because she's had 35 partners, mm -hmm. which basically equated to two sexual partners a year, which is not bad at all. No. But they got on her like she was the like she was the biggest whore in the world. And then but who said they want a center though? <laughs> Just comedian name Yvonne Orgy. Yeah, she a a, a thirty nine year old virgin. Uh -huh. Say she wait and say you know she has been buried. You know she gonna she gonna wait. But when her husband when she get all that she gonna be wooling wooling. Make his head pop off. And the funny thing about it, you mentioned that, and that's one of the topics for the night. And I tweeted, I tweeted you earlier today about her. I said, listen, what y'all think about this god fearing woman who has herself aligned in the right places, being union unionized with on? Nah, what? I'm looking for a center. Huh? I'm looking for a center. <laughs> I'm looking for a center. <laughs> Sit me, Miss Nancy. Don't say, uh, can you pause it right Miss there? The umbrella. Miss but don't they on the flip side always say they want a virtuous woman with a low body count, but then when they see one, now you want a center. Now, just... you, now you want a center. Women don't listen to shit men gotta say. It's it's done. It, after this, if y'all still listening to what they gotta say, you foolish. It's it's done. He sat there and, and choked on his cognac about Brittany Renner, but he's saying he want a center? Right. They telling y'all to have low body counts, but, but you want a center. But you want to center, and honestly, Yvonne Orgy, uh, that actor, that actress, there's no reason why she should be single. She's a no. virtuous woman. Why is she still single? Because you black. Really don't want a virtuous woman. Yeah, because she black and she ain't virtuous. And there's an expectation that they go have to live up to with a woman who's at 39 who giving them their virginity. First of all, I think it's foolish for a woman at 39 to be a, a virgin. I think it's completely foolish. It's idiotic. Talk about it. Talk about it. Because you're you're saying that you want to have your first sexual experience when at 39 or plus when you're married and you don't even know what you like sexually. You have no idea what you like sexually. But you're going to get into a marriage with this man, not even knowing if he can please you. But then you don't even know what will please you because you're 39 and you ain't had no sexual experiences. I think it's foolish and idiotic. I really do think it is. And I think it's a weak at attempt to sit up and try to reclaim some virtuosity for a group of men who don't value it. I think it's really dumb. And I don't want, I'm tired of hearing people saying that women need to withhold sex till marriage. Why? Why? So that he doesn't have to compete with the other men who have sexually pleased you, so that he doesn't have any motivation to do better in the bed. Because that's really what these men's issue is with body count. They're saying, I don't want to have to compete with another man sexually. I don't want you to be able to compare me to too many men sexually because then you will see that I got trash dick and my, my attitude. <laughs> So it's like they, they body counts are high. If you having sex with 12 women, with 17 women in 12 hours, you got an astronomical body count. But you yeah. got the audacity to sit up here and say you don't want a woman with a body count. Why? Why? What's the reason? Because surely you want a woman that's sexually experienced who knows her way around some pain, right? And, sp and speaking of that, when 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 uh, when Yvonne went viral, I was reading the comment section and men were saying she shouldn't do this. You know, no man's going to want her. We like a woman that's uh, experienced. But the only way you get experience is with experience. So yeah. what the fuck do y'all want? They They don't want her to judge them against her other sexual partners any man that gets with britney renner got to compete with 30 other men he got to compete with 30 other men because what if she get up and say yeah you know you got some trash dick he got to believe her <laughs> yeah but he and he got to believe her because look at how many she had so now you're inferior sexually in comparison to every other man that she had sex with that's their issue with body count. They don't want to compete sexually with the other men that you've been with. But truly, you can't think. Trash. But truly, you can't think just because you're a man that means you're superior sexually. Just like uh, when it comes to financially, there are going to be men that are superior to you, looks wise, body wise, sexual wise. Yes, you might not be her biggest and her best. Yes.
Most likely you're not. But do every man want to feel like they are? I guess you can feed that delusion if you want to. <laughs> yeah, they want to feel like they are. They really do. They want to feel like they're your best. In order for them to be your best, you can't have no other person that they can be with. Because how likely is it that one man that she get with is going to be better than the 30 other men prior? Good point. I mean, yeah, they're the chance, but no. No, you have to put in some work to please a woman who's been with that many men. Because she know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bonnie would not have any anybody to compare any man to. She has yeah. nothing to. So in in her world, he's the best she's ever had because he's the only she's ever had. And I think that's stupid. I think women hold themselves back too much for men. I think that women suppress way too much about themselves and their desires just for male approval. Because I think women do like new dick. Women like the excitement yes. of new dick. Yes. Nobody is going to convince me they won't. There's just very few women who are open to admitting it. I will admit it. I There is a thrill. There is a thrill in your mind to think about the length, the girth, the technique. What is it going to feel like? What is it? What spot is it going to hit? Is he going to be able to reach this area? Is it curved or not? Is it straight? There's an excitement behind it. I know women. Nancy. I've been reading them comment sections. I already know women be freaky, but they just... You know, because of the patriarchal society we live in, you know, your sexuality gets suppressed. But I'm like, come on now. You as a man can't think that you have eyes for other women, but she don't have eyes for other men. If men cared about body counts, they wouldn't buy prostitutes. OK, so yeah, let's just be real. They wouldn't they marry wouldn't, hoes. And we know they try to marry hoes. And they wouldn't cheat on their wives with so-called thoughts. There you go. So, so why are you basing your life experiences around what a man wants? Like, I couldn't care less. Do I think that's going to make it harder for me to get a man? Absolutely not. No. Men are going to have sex with you anyway. Whether you've been with 500 or 5,000, they're still going to jump in the bed with you. You can't say they're going to value you less because they don't value you anyway. Most of them, if you listen to them, they don't value you. Do True. they seem like they value Yvonne and she got a body count of zero? Not not at all. And not and 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 uh, Shannon Sharp is so stupid. He's talking about, oh, I want Miss B Nasty. Uh Miss B yeah, Nasty Miss B Nasty is a solo performer. She says she ain't taping with you niggas either. She said, I'm gonna play with myself and squirt in my house in peace. Right, but he wants Miss B Nasty because of her sexuality, her sexual prowess, her experience, her abilities, or what he believes is her abilities. That's why he wants her. He wants her based on how he thinks she can make him feel sexually. And I just think that women, it's like, what do y'all really think these men are? Do you think these men are wholesome sitting up in the house looking? You really believe they looking for, please, they looking for a wild night from an experienced woman. And that's why you off, look at Derek Jackson cheating on his, on Danae with women who are the exact opposite of her. The Thank women you. who he actually really wants, but quiet at this cap. Do Derek Jackson want to compete? No. With the options of those, no. So that's no. why Danae and Jackson was locked down in a house with no makeup on, a face full of acne, gaining weight every single time, tremendous amount. Every he suppressed the hell out of her. He suppressed her completely, and then discarded her when he was done with her. That's what Derek Jackson did. That's very true. That's very true. She was submissive. She was, was. low-key. She was quiet. He acknowledged how he, she kept the home and the children. So she was what they say that they want. Yet this dude was literally running dick to these so-called Instagram women. Running it. To the women who had a face full of makeup on, weave, nails done, looking like they just jumped off of Instagram on a fashion over ad. Like, that's not what and, they want. And, they want titties out. And if y'all remember the Tasha K expose, no protection. This man was not using protection at all. Like, and eating them out. And it's like, so you go cheat on your wife and not even, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Yikes. Yikes. Ain't no way. Mm -hmm. well, Cynthia G, this this has been fun um real quick i want to get my um to get the thumbnail here real quick wait a minute wait a minute no wait 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 my bad i'm gonna remove myself so i can now i can't hear you 
Perfect. There we go. I had to get the still of just you for oh, the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, you know, you look like you are free, like not stressed out. Yeah. You you seem happy, and I'm like, damn. Do I need to build up my Patreon so I can? I mean, it's not just Patreon. It's me having to do a lot of inner work. It's it, like I've I've had a lot of bad experiences, a lot of trauma, but I think it's trying to heal, taking accountability, um, personal autonomy, and thinking about how I can have more power over the outcomes in my relationships because nobody is powerless. Um, do I sit here and contemplate as I write this relationship book on my experiences? I still have to think about, okay, why did I allow this to happen? What did I overlook? Did I give too many chances? Was I given too much of myself and not receiving anything in return? So there's a lot of self-work that I'm having to do. Um, it's difficult, but I refuse to be in a mindset to where I'm not going to be happy being by myself to where I need to be tethered to a man to feel like I'm happy. I, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like dependence on anybody. I don't want anybody to be the controller or author of my happiness. I don't. And if you're relying on a man for your happiness as a woman, you're going to be miserable, unfortunately. So, yeah. um, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I really am. I'm good. I'm trying to find my place of balance. I'm trying to find my own Zen. Um, but being on Patreon, I'll tell you, it's a lot better than being on YouTube. It's a lot better okay. than being on YouTube. It is a lot better. And it's not <sighs> the fact that it's just not cluttered with the amount of harassment, like, because even now, like people will come and they'll be like, oh, your name is in so many different people's videos. And they're, you know, they making these shorts on my Patreon numbers and how much money they think that contributes to like, I don't have to see that. I don't have. To yeah. See you that. don't even like, you don't even have to worry about it. The toxicity. Let's speak on this, Sue. What was up with O'Shea Duke Jackson talking about some, I got to get away from you. He's aligning himself with her and he's in danger. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Now, I'm my too ugly for me to listen to. I refuse to listen to a person that ugly. Listen, for real. I refuse to. I, I won't. So I just I just don't want to be concerned with the meanderings of ugly people. But since we're on the topic, um, I didn't watch the video. I didn't hear anything that he's saying, but I know a lot of people hate on you and Themis <laughs> based on my willingness. To, but it's like, here's the thing. I like talking to you. We have a good chemistry when it comes to collaborating. We can have good discussions. We can disagree amicably. We can bounce ideas off of each other. You know, even behind the scenes, like I'll show you certain things that people on YouTube is not privy to like, you yeah. know about the situation with that woman before anybody made an article on it. You, yeah. you knew about it. <laughs> like, so that's the thing. It's a, a very, it's a non-toxic dynamic. It's a dynamic where you're not trying to humble me or put me in my place or make me feel some kind of way. You don't have to, you don't have to agree with it, but you still go about the disagreement um, respectfully, the same thing with Themis. And I think that they're trying to attack you and him as people, not understanding that it is because of the way that we mesh, the respect, the mutual respect, the fact that we can sit up here. Can you, who's having an intellectual discussion with O'Shea? Like, I, who? <laughs> who? I mean, I think he's trying to do that over there in Uganda. I haven't seen all of it, but I, I, I think he try. I don't, I don't know. No, like ain't nobody having no discussion with him. You're not going to have a mutually beneficial discussion about anything, even spiritual stuff, because we don't have to talk about. Yeah, yeah we talk reality. about spiritual yeah, stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they're they're not looking at the character, y'all's character. Yeah. They're not connecting the dots between your character. They're just sitting up here being retarded and childish throwing out dumb insults, making speculations. Like they don't know either one of y'all. That's the thing. It's like, they don't know you. They don't know him. 
they just want to sit up there and speculate. It's just, it's annoying. Like, it's disgusting. It's, I'm glad I don't have to see it on Patreon. <laughs> like, I, I know you're over it. It's, it. And it's always like, they, they don't have nothing constructive. They just like, he gay. It is like, if I was and what's your point? But it's like, how do you know? Did you suck his dick or something? I'm starting to think they want to. I really believe they want to. I think they're, I really do. I think they attracted to you and things. And, and I'm, I there, I said it. <laughs> oh my God. Let's hope not. But yeah, they. Now, if you best believe there are men in this space who are attracted to y'all, trust and believe. I don't think that a man, listen, any man who is hyper focused on the sexuality of another man is because they're attracted to him. And nobody's going to convince me anything different. We And we know we got a down low epidemic too. So <laughs> we know, yes, they're not going to admit it. They're not going to admit it. But I think they do. It's a mess. Cynthia G, tell the people where we can follow you. You can come find me on Patreon. My Patreon is just go to patreon.com forward slash Cynthia G. Or I think you can go in there and type in the revolution will not be televised. And my Patreon should come up, but it will definitely come up if you do patreon.com forward slash Cynthia um, G. There we go, people. All right. Oh, you can do 10, 20, 30. Perfect. Yeah. It's it's just such a yeah, you don't get the visibility. Um, which if I get my channel back, I will be on there on a at a limited capacity. I could be back on I still have a channel with 60,000 subs. I could I could still be on YouTube if I wanted to. That's what they don't get. I could still be on YouTube if I wanted to. I have multiple channels that, that has no connection or affiliation to the other two. So um, if I really wanted to be on YouTube, it would take me no time to turn that channel with 60,000 subs on it to a channel with 120,000. It, would, it wouldn't sure. take that much time if I really wanted to build up that channel. But um it's very beneficial to my mental health to not be on YouTube right now. It's I'm very beneficial to it. It is. And if they want to find me and my content um, for now and until further notice, you're going to have to come to Patreon. You, you just will. You, you have to come to Patreon. And if whoever doesn't want to, that's fine. Um, but I am getting a, a good amount of support on there. So good. I'm happy. Good. Well, it's it's lovely talking to you as always. I got to actually I got to go. But um, you enjoy your day and, you know, I'm going to text you once I put the video up. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And, you know, you already know how it is. So, of course, you know, okay. it's always a pleasure to come on here. Even even beyond coming on here, it's, it's a pleasure to talk to you. So, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, they hate we cool in real life. They hate that. No, they hate <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you take care and have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. It's storm show. It's storm show.